ever wondered what my personal financial goals and dreams are? Ever wondered what I am doing to help make sure I achieve all of my financial goals and dreams? Or maybe you're just wondering what are all the clever little tips, tricks and strategies that I am personally using to help achieve all of my financial goals and dreams, not only as quickly and as easily as possible, but also with a sense of joy, balance and satisfaction. Well, let me share with you everything right here, right now in this video. Hi everyone, welcome back to Sugar Mama TV. I am financial planner, Canna Campbell. So in today's video, I wanna share with you what some of my financial goals and dreams are and how I set those goals up front correctly in the right type of way to really make sure that I set myself up for success. Now, a quick reminder, all of my content is general advice only. It's never personal advice, strategic advice, or investment advice. It is purely for your financial education and perhaps a little bit of inspiration and motivation along the way. Now, the reason why I wanna share with you my goals is because I want you to know that I am just like you. I, too, myself, am on my own journey and adventure towards realistic long-term financial freedom and independence. I value financial harmony in my life. So I completely get the setbacks, the challenges, the fear, the anxiety, the frustration, which are all a natural part of life, and particularly when you're working towards something really important to you. But I also understand and value the importance of setting exciting, meaningful financial goals in your life that really make you jump out of bed with a new profound level of energy and excitement towards life. And I know how incredibly exciting that feeling of pride, satisfaction, progress, momentum, and success really feels as you realize how powerful and capable you are at achieving greater financial well-being in your life. So before I share with you what my financial goals and dreams are and what I'm doing to make sure that they happen, I'm also going to share with you the seven rules that I follow with all of my goals. Rule number one is I always write down my goals. I will take that dream or that idea and turn it into a goal by writing it down in handwriting in black and white. The reason why this is so incredibly important is when it is written down, that goal, that journey has begun. You are birthing it and you are setting the momentum. And then seeing it written down concrete in black and white or blue and white, it really does change the way that you think and therefore act. The goal has now been born and the journey has begun. Momentum has commenced and now you have the choice to continue on building on that momentum until that goal becomes a reality. So write down all of your goals. Rule number two is I write my goals down in a very clear and direct manner. Money loves definition and direction. This is extremely important. So when I write my goals down, I write them as simply as possible using keywords only and trying not to use too many words, almost like an elevator pitch to my goals. The reason why I find this so incredibly helpful is it completely changes my mindset and my attitude because it gives me a great sense of focus and determination because I know exactly what I want and when. Rule number three is I write my goals in the present tense. I will never say I am going to or I will because I will continuously push that goal into the future and it will probably never happen. But when I write my goals in the present moment, such as I am paying off my mortgage, I am building my passive income stream, I am diversifying my investment portfolio, I am contributing to my superannuation account. When I write it as in the present tense, I am, it triggers immediate action. And I also find it triggers regular, consistent, immediate action that sometimes builds so much momentum that the, the actual action becomes bigger and bigger and more powerful. I'm really stepping up, embracing all the different ideas and things that I can actually do to make sure that that goal happens as quickly as possible. This triggers a huge amount of motivation and action for me. So write down your goals, 
Make sure they're clear and direct and write them in the present tense. Even subconsciously, this is very, very powerful. You will see that you really do step up immediately with the right type of action that is in positive correlation to that goal. Rule number four is I always write my goals in the positive form. I will never use negative words. The reason why I do this is I believe we become what we think. The more we see, the more we get. And what we appreciate, appreciates. So I will write my goals down around what I actually want to build, create, manifest, attract in my life. The brain cannot process the words not, can't, don't, won't. So for example, if you want to get rid of your credit card debt, I would never recommend you write your goal such as no more credit card debt because you run the risk of potentially manifesting or attracting more credit card debt in your life because the brain doesn't see the word no or no more, it sees credit card debt. So instead, you would write your goal to be credit card free. Well, number five is all of my goals have a deadline, a line in the sand, an actual date by which I want to have achieved that goal, such as the 1st of December, 2020. The reason why this is incredibly powerful is you realize how valuable time is and you stop wasting it. You tend to step up and plan your time out with greater respect to your resources. It triggers immediate reaction and consistent action. And you feel way more accountable. In fact, when I do this, I quite often find that all the actions that it triggers within me means I achieve that goal even before my day deadline, which feels great. Rule number six is I love to have clearly defined big goals. Big goals are really make me excited about living my best life possible and trying all the time. However, all of those big goals have lots of little goals behind them. The reason why this is so helpful for me is it takes away the anxiety or feeling completely overwhelmed or scared by that big goal. I simply take that big goal and then work backwards and work out all the little baby mini bite-sized goals that are therefore more manageable and achievable that I can strategically place during my deadline to make sure that the goal actually happens. Now, the great thing about this is as you achieve these goals, you're building very valuable momentum and you're building progress. And I always say progress fuels success. It's kind of like going on an exercise plan. When you realize that each week you're getting fitter and stronger and maybe more defined and more lean or whatever your goal might be, it inspires you to keep going because you can see that the hard work and the sacrifices are really paying off. And that invigorates you with even more motivation, dedication, and commitment to keep going and perhaps maybe even see what if you can possibly exceed your goal and dream. And then the final rule for my goals is I check in on a regular basis. I'm always reviewing my progress. I reread my goals all the time. I look at where my savings accounts are up to. I look at what the mortgage is up to. I look at what my passive income is up to, the diversification within my portfolio. I look and track everything. I monitor my progress so that I can see how far I'm coming, but I also can see what is working and what is not and allows me to then really fine tune my strategy so I can focus on what I want more of and less of, which really helps me manage my resources with even more efficiency. All right, so those are my seven rules for setting goals. And this is what I am working on right now for my financial goals. The first goal that I'm working on is rebuilding my emergency money. If you listen to my podcast, you will hear about the disaster of Frugal February. It wiped out all of our emergency savings, pretty much down to zero dollars. So our priority right now as a family is to rebuild our emergency money, which means we've gone back to our budget and really looked at increasing our regular savings plan as quickly and as easily as possible. Yes, that has meant that we've had to pause other goals in our lives, such as saving up for a holiday, because this takes greater priority. You see, without emergency money, we are really jeopardizing our financial well-being. So a holiday can wait whilst we prioritize building up our emergency savings. And having said that, we are leaving no stone unturned. Both Tom and I are looking at the ways that we make money, run our businesses, the way we manage our time, to look at what additional things we can do in our life to help build up that emergency money as quickly as possible. Now, to make sure that we're doing this in a very efficient way, we are using our redraws facility to hold our emergency money. A reminder that this is not strategic advice or investment advice, but the benefit of using either an offset facility or a redraw facility is as we build up our emergency money, it is helping us save valuable time and interest off our own home loan, which is one of our other financial goals. 
So what we have done is set a regular savings plan into our redraw facility so we can see our mortgage actually coming down in the meantime. But we also have the comfort of knowing that our emergency saving goals are back in progress again. And yes, we've accepted that it may take a while to get them back to where they really need to be, but we're okay with that because we love the feeling of progress. And as we know, progress fuels success. Our second goal, the moment our emergency money is rebuilt, is to get back on the mortgage-free path. Both Tom and I really want to get rid of our mortgage as quickly as possible. We look at the monthly interest repayment and we feel sick. We want to make sure that we beat the bank. Now, if you've been following my content for a while now, you know that we actually recently moved into a bigger home. We upgraded our home, which meant a new mortgage where the bank put us on their normal standard prescription of 30 years. However, there is absolutely no way that Tom and I want to spend 30 years paying off our home. So what we have done is set some goals down where we want to make sure that we pay our mortgage off within 20 years or less. So we have set down a deadline, a date, by the 1st of December 2042 to be mortgage free. And I'll have to say this really excites both of us so much because this is a really meaningful goal. I'm pretty sure we're going to beat that date. The third goal in our lives is to continue on building our mindful money number, that is $200,000 a year. If you're not familiar with my book, Mindful Money, I highly recommend you read it. But Tom and I have a passive income goal to build $200,000 a year in sustainable, growing, long-term passive income streams that will come from a variety of different sources, including shares and property. Now, we really feel that $200,000 a year is enough to allow us to cut back on work or potentially even retire early. It will fund our lifestyle and allow us to travel around the world and live the life that we really want. So this goal still remains. However, we've had to pause this goal for the time being whilst we work on prioritizing our emergency money. However, I will share with you the existing passive income streams that we have already built, we are still holding on to. And where we can, we reinvest all of that passive income so that that passive income can continue to grow organically whilst we focus on our number one and number two goals. What we have done is tracked the percentage as to how much passive income we have built so far in relation to the $200,000 a year passive income goal. And this is something that we communicate to each other on a regular basis so that we know we are on track. And we have accepted the fact that it may take a while to get that goal working again while we prioritize goal number one and two. But I have to also share with you that the motivation is great because we can't wait to come back to paying off our home loan and building up our passive income. So it really is fueling our determination and commitment to getting our emergency money back on track as quickly as possible. The fourth goal is also around our superannuation. I always talk about the importance of superannuation as part of a comprehensive holistic financial strategy. Now for Tom and I, we have both agreed to put in the maximum that we can each financial year into our superannuation because for us personally, tax is not only very valuable, it also gives us tax incentives and advantages that help us accelerate our wealth creation process on a really efficient manner. Whilst we're trying to keep a good balance on all of these goals in our lives, superannuation from a long-term strategy is incredibly important in giving us immediate and long-term tax benefits. And again, this also contributes to part of our mindful money number. You see, in due course, further down the track, Tom and I will be using our superannuation to help supplement part of our mindful money number. That is our $200,000 a year passive income stream. And then our fifth and final goal is actually a really interesting one. It's our insurances. I really value comprehensive personal insurances such as life cover, income protection, trauma cover, and of course, total and permanent disablement. Both Tom and I have all of those insurance policies in place. However, as it is for most people, these premiums have really increased. And I worked out the other day, we're spending up to $1,500 a month on these insurances. Now, whilst I would never ever cancel or reduce this cover, what I am determined to make sure is we really secure our financial situation as best we can, so that perhaps in due course, as our mortgage comes down or is potentially paid off, we can look to reduce the levels of cover for these policies so that they don't necessarily cost us as much. And that will 
will in turn help free up our cash flow so that we can then put more money towards the mortgage or perhaps if we're mortgage free by then we can put more money towards our superannuation and our investing goals. So you can see they are all linked together and they have a process and an order of priorities. Now all of these goals are written down. They're all written in a very clear and direct manner where we know exactly what we want and when. And those goals are written in the present tense because we are doing all the things right now to make sure that these goals actually happen. Goals all have a deadline. An exciting deadline, perhaps a little bit of a scary deadline, but something that we are seriously committed to and not wasting any time at all. These goals, particularly our mortgage goal, have lots of mini bite-sized mini and achievable goals behind them so that we do feel like we have a sense of progress and success and momentum in our lives. And finally, I also always check these goals on a regular basis and communicate the progress, how we're going, what's working, what's not working with Tom, my partner. I really hope that you've enjoyed listening to what is going on inside my personal world with my personal financial goals and dreams. Again, a reminder, this is general advice only, but I really hope that this inspires you and motivates you to look at your own financial goals and look at what's really important to you and what would bring financial harmony in your life and build the goals around them so that you can live your best life where you feel inspired and have a great sense of motivation, determination and direction. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Have a great week. Don't forget my two podcasts, and I'll see you next Thursday afternoon. Ciao for now.